tigers are not concerned of the opinion of sheep. Hello everyone and welcome to Dear Aline. I am back with the third episode of How to Life. Today's guest is... Say your name! John Lee. <laughs> John Lee. John Lee's episode is about how to money because John is good with money. This is why. Here's the proof. John has over <laughs> houses. I only have three. I thought I was cool, but I'm not. He has a listed company in the stock exchange, which means he really knows how money works because I don't even know how the stock exchange works. And he has written a book called The Wealth Dragon Way, which teaches people like me and you who don't understand money very well how to use it in a way that will make our life better. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, so John. Yes. You are very good with money. I like to think so. Have you always been good with money? No, actually I haven't. Okay. But one of the things I started with is, is if you want to get something, you've got to find someone who's already got it. Like success or, and wealth leaves clues. So mm -hmm. you have to look at what's in the trend right now, what's working, what's not working. And I guess when I first started is like, what's the easiest thing that I can do? Because I'm not very clever. I'm not, I didn't do well at school. So mm -hmm. what's, the third, like, what's one thing that I can do that can get me to that goal. And so I started doing a lot of research and what I found that if, if you want to make money, the people who had the money were investing in, were, were investors. They weren't spending money, they were investing it. Okay, so you are 38. Mm -hmm. And how old were you when you had your first million? It's 27. 27, mm -hmm. okay. And how did you go from zero to a million? Because you were raised in like a normal family, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were, Chinese immigrants, yep. and you lived in London? Manchester. Manchester, yes. okay, which is different from London, everyone. And they had a Chinese restaurant, mm -hmm. and you worked there. Yes. Was this like a super successful Chinese restaurant? It, no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, I mean, I've worked every weekend there. I, did, I actually didn't have a life. Wow. So, <laughs> so I was just every weekend just working in the Chinese restaurant, washing dishes, and yeah, that's, that's all I did. At what age? Were you like a little kid? Were you like in high school? No, and you know Asians, they start you off when, they're, when you're really young. <laughs> like very small. <laughs> but when, when I was five, I kind of got into the whole, you know, chopping mushrooms and peeling onions, and then I got upgraded to wow. the dishwasher. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so how did, you, how did you switch over, like, to doing anything with business? What was the first turning point as a child? I didn't see my parents actually till the age of 11 years old. You know, and to clarify, just to be clear, the 200 properties that we bought, it's not just myself, but I did that with partners. Yeah. And one of the things I realized is that if you, if you want to earn more, you can't, it's really hard to do it yourself. You have to find people to work with. You have to find, you have to go to people who already have that success, mm. you know? And so what I did is I found someone who was, you know, he was a property millionaire, he was very wealthy. How did you find him though? Because a lot of people watching this at home mm. are like, you know, in university or they just graduated mm. and they don't know people like that. They mm. would never, like when I was in college, if you were like, go find a millionaire mm. and partner with them, I'd be like, where are the millionaires? Like, where are these people? And if I find one, why would they want to talk to me? Okay, good question. So there are lots of places you, you want to go that people hang out. So if I want to get into technology, I'll go to a technology conference. If I want to go to and find people who are successful, then I want to go to business conferences, and that's mm. what I did. But there was also these property conferences as well, so I thought, well, look, if I want to find someone who's successful, then they're going to be hanging around in these property conferences. And sure enough, I, I had to attend a property conference, and I met one guy, his name was Ranjan, and he, he was talking about all these different concepts, like stuff I've never heard about before. Yeah. And so what I realized is that People who are very wealthy, they have knowledge that people who are not wealthy have. They know different things. They, they have specialized knowledge. So then my goal was to, okay, well, how can I get with these people? And to answer your question, yeah. why would they even work with you? You got to, a lot of people, when they meet people, it's always like, take, 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 take. What, 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 what's in it for me, right? Yes. But it should be about what's in it for them. Like you really want to help people and serve people. And yeah. so when I found a lot of these successful people, you're right, a lot of them said, why should I listen to you? Who the hell are you? And so I thought, okay, well, I'll come from a different angle of how can I help you? And yep. I learned one thing, and that thing was, if you find a deal, the money will find you. Yeah. So what investors want is they want to earn more money. So I yeah. thought, well, if I just go out and find a deal, then um, they're going to be money for it. Let me give you a real life example of this from my life. So 
a friend of mine is kind of similar to you. Mm. He's gonna be a crazy gajillionaire one day, and he started Normal Family, mm. and the way he does it is he finds a good deal, he doesn't necessarily have the money to pay for it, and then he reaches out to people, and his friends are not all super rich, so he can't find one friend with $300,000, so he goes to each friend and he goes, hey, do you wanna invest 20,000 in this house? I'll give you back 22,000 in one year. So he came to me, he's like, hey, do you wanna give me 20K? I'll put it in this house and you'll get 22K in a year. And I was like, this is my friend, I like him, you know, why not? So I do that. And now he has another house that he's gonna keep. He gets to keep the house in the long term, but I got to make some money just from him borrowing the money from me for one year. So that's a great example and I just wanted to give you guys a little simplified version of how that would work in real life. And Alin, that's exactly how I did my first deal. Really? Yeah, I mean, that's, it, this, <laughs> this example is so true. My first deal that I did is um, I found a property, it was, it was on the market for 170, 150, 160. In the US? Or, or, no, no, this is in, in, in the England. UK. So okay. it's around that range, all the houses around that 150, 170. But that deal got offered to me for 85,000. Wow. Right, so it's like almost half the price. And at first I thought there was something wrong with it. I said, why would someone give you a house that's half the price? But it turns out there's lots of reasons, yeah. you know, personal reasons. Yeah. And so of course I thought, well, it's a great opportunity, but of course I didn't have 85,000 pounds. So I literally- How old were you, sorry? I think I was around 24, 25, around that, around that age. Okay. 24, 25. So that means you, he succeeded quickly from age 24, mm. 25 to 27. Oh yeah, it was about a three year period how I, how, how I made it. Yeah. So, because when you find that something works, you just keep repeating the process. Mm -hmm. So, I actually found somebody from, I mean, I must have spoken to at least two, three hundred people. Yeah. Say, do you have 85,000? Do you have 85,000? And I was doing the wrong pitch. Mm -hmm. So, I had to learn, if you want to pitch properly, I had to learn how to sell. Mm -hmm. So, the way you pitch is you say, don't give me 85,000. I would say, I've got a house that's worth this much, but if you give me this, then I'll give you the return, just like you've described. Yeah. So I ended up finding an investor who gave me 85,000. I bought the house for 85,000 pounds cash. Wow. That wasn't my money. It's a concept called OPM, using other people's money, just like you explained. And then I sold the property two months later. For two months? Two months later for 185,000. I made 100,000 pounds. Like what did the investor get? They got a good return, so they got 85,000 back, plus a 1% return. And it wasn't for a year, because I figured out a way to buy the property and then sell it really quick, oh. right? By using different marketing strategies. Yeah. So, and then I just kept repeating the process over and over and over so again. So what were those strategies? So why did you get an $180,000 house for 80, mm. number one? Mm. And number two, why were you able to sell it so quickly? Okay, so, <laughs> interesting, <laughs> right? So first of all, there are lots of people that, shall we say, they get into a relationship, yeah. they buy a house, and yeah. things don't work out. So, oh, yeah. you know, the divorce know rate that. is extremely high. So yeah. you imagine two people bought a property, they yeah. hate each other now because one person's cheating on the other, whatever reason, yeah. and now they just want to get out. They don't okay. actually don't, they don't care what they sell it for because uh, emotions take over logic now. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons. Another reason could be um, someone has inherited a house. They become an accidental landlord. So they, they don't want anything to do with the house. They're yeah. like, it's this just house, so they just want to get rid of it. House gets left to three kids. Kids yeah. just want to get the money out quick. And that so, happened to my mom. Right, so, right? so yeah. it, there's so many different reasons why. I mean, some people, they, they overextend. Okay. Right, they get a job, but they get made redundant. Now they can't afford to pay the mortgage. And if you don't buy it, if they don't sell it quick, the bank's going to take the house and they're going to lose everything. So, so how do you find these people? Just by talking to people. Just so, just from networking, yeah. just talking. talking so it's people. literally friends of friends. You're not. I online. mean, there are a few other techniques. Yeah. Um, you but know, that's a good one. It's good to start with your. Yeah, personal. I mean, like you just said, like you know, people in your circle, you must know people who yeah. are looking to sell a house. I mean, I'm sure if you ask around enough, like if you just make one post on social media to say, do you know anyone who's selling a house? Yeah. I'm sure you're gonna get one or two people, or you put, you put, do you know anyone selling a house? Mm -hmm. Share this post with them and send me a DM. Yeah. Right. So you, I mean, social media's made it so easy now to connect so with people. Easy. You know. So. And there's forums and things like this. There's podcasts mm. to learn mm. the basics. And when I got my first houses, mm. the way that I did it is, I'm not a property expert. Okay. I know the basics. I know you know you should buy 
a duplex for your first house. So you live in half and then you rent the other half and your renters are paying your mortgage. I know that, I know these basic things, but I also didn't trust myself completely to mm. go through the house process mm. correctly. So I found someone like you 10 years ago, you mm. know, or five years ago, uh, a local real estate guy, and I essentially got his advice. So find someone local in your area, mm. think who, who, who of my friends or my parents' friends bought a house? Who seems smart with money? And then you say to them, hey, who was your uh, real estate guy or girl? Who was your real estate person? And then talk to them because they will give you advice. They know the market better than you probably ever will because that's their full-time job. Would you agree or would you say? Definitely. I mean, okay. there's, there's, there's another way to become a homeowner. It's, called, it's what we call rent to buy. Yeah. So a lot of people can't, don't have the money to buy a house. But what people do is they rent in the property for a long time. So what you can do is you can go to, a, if, you're, if you're watching this and you're renting, you can go to your landlord and say, you know what, I'm gonna rent the house for say five or 10 years mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna buy it. The only condition is, I'm gonna buy it at today's price. So imagine right now a house oh. worth 100. I'm gonna rent it, but I have an option to buy it at today's price. So today's price is 100,000. Yeah. And we all know that over time, especially here in you know where we are in Singapore it's right now, the price. it's crazy. So in 10 years time, it might be worth 200,000. Yeah. So now you have the option to buy it at 200,000, Yeah. right? So that means if you, if you, if you rent for 10 years, it's 100,000. Now it's 200,000. You can sell the whole thing for 200,000 pay off the 100,000, now you've got 100,000, and now you can use that money to buy another house. So let's say somebody mm. is renting to buy, because all of you probably pay rent unless you live with your families or mm. something. So once you're a little older and you live alone, you're paying rent. Yeah. So how do you do the rent to buy? Do you have to get paperwork? Do you go to a bank? Do you just do paperwork with your, how do you make sure it so, works? So let's say I'm, let's say yeah. a live negotiation, okay. right? So I, I would come to you and I would ask your situation on, you know, so you own this property and I'm gonna say, you know what, Elena, I'm gonna buy this from you. Okay. But not today, in 10 years time. Mm. So I'm gonna rent it from you for, you know, 10 years. I'll take care of all the maintenance because if you're a landlord, landlords hate maintenance. They hate, you know, if someone smashes the when window. They break the fridge correct. And so I'll be responsible for all of that. And so you agree, I agree. And it goes on to just a piece of paper, right? So you write down. Any what, piece of paper. Well, you don't need a notary or something. Well, so this is how it works. So so we get a piece of paper, we draw a line down the middle, this is what you agree, this is what I agree. Yeah. It's what we call heads of terms. So this is what you agree to. Heads of terms. Right? So we get all of that and then we just take that piece of paper, we go to a lawyer and say legalize it. Yeah. Okay, so, so you do go to a lawyer. Yeah, so they, a lawyer. so they will legalize it. Okay. And then once the contract comes back, it's everything you agreed, what I agreed, we sign, done. This is a really common question I got on Instagram when I asked all of you if you have any questions for him. If you're from a third world country, do you have advice on how to grow wealth? Mm -hmm. Because what you said can work in, um, I prefer to say developing country, they said third world country, but if you're from a developing country, mm. even then it's kind of hard to find 10 friends with 10,000 each when people are earning 200 a month or 300 right. a month. Right. Um, do you have uh, some thoughts for people like that or not really? I actually wrote a book called Business Hack actually. Oh. <laughs> and it, it, it should talk I didn't know it was about that. It's here, but yeah. I had no idea. So, so here's the thing. Um, I think we're living in a world now where everything's changing. Yeah. Um, everywhere right now has the internet. Yeah. So, so in fact, when I was speaking in Malaysia, I was, I was giving them strategies. You don't want to have a local business, you want a global business. Yeah. So if I can make money in pounds and spend it in ringgits, mm -hmm. that's like one to five, five yeah. times. So then how do you do that? Well, it's called the internet. <laughs> so, so anyone right now can put a shop online. You know, if you all have access to the internet, I'm sure you all use Facebook or Instagram. You can literally, there's lots of softwares out there where you click a button, it'll make a website, and then yeah. all you have to do is market your website and have things to sell. Oh. So, so everyone right now, if you've got two, 300 bucks and that's all you're making, then you, that's enough for you to, to create something where you can put something to sell. Now people say, well, John, well, what do I sell? I can't afford to put things on there to sell. So yeah. there is a strategy called commission-based marketing. So there are, where you are right now, I'm sure there's businesses. There will be businesses, there'll be companies, hotels, restaurants, you name it. And all you have to do is go to these businesses and then ask them what they need help with so some of them might say, I need help with advertising, I need help with posting things on social media, I need help with Facebook. There are people out there who will pay one to $2,000 for you to just make posts for them on social media. That's yeah. it. 
Right. So and you don't have to be very good at it because I'm in a lot of social media manager groups mm, mm. and I see the people who are getting paid to manage other people's Facebook right. and Instagram and they are not very advanced. They don't really know what they're doing. So a lot of people, um, a lot of companies don't know what they're doing on social media. Right. And so they'll hire someone who's a beginner. And I'm not saying you should market yourself if you're not qualified, but I'm saying you can learn quickly on the job. Mm. You know, when I, I worked for a company and I learned how to build websites quickly mm. yep. when I needed to build one, I didn't outsource it to someone else, you know? So you need to teach yourself these skills. You can't just expect someone to give you money. You can't just expect to be able to make money online with no effort. Like every job you're gonna do and every entrepreneurial effort, you need to be doing a lot. Like. I'm sure you get, I get so many emails from people that want help yeah. and that want assistance. And like you said, you shouldn't be asking for help. You should be offering help. Correct. Correct. So if you, if someone wanted to work for him, for example, they don't say, hi, um, John, can I have a job? Can I work for you? Mm. You're super rich. Can mm. I have a job? You have extra money. Mm. Can you pay for my school tuition? No, 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 no. You say, Hey John, like I've been studying X and Y in my home city and I would love to, you know, help you grow your program here. The the sentiment of the email is the same, but the outcome will be very different. Oh. Yeah. Huge, and you're absolutely right. I mean yeah. those emails that I get, it's just like like you don't want to beg. You know, no. you want you wanna you wanna add value, I mean real value. So if all you did was just say, Hey, you know what, I wanna create some videos for you know, your restaurant. Most people have a smartphone. And if yeah. you have a smartphone, you can borrow one. And the cameras now on, say, an iPhone 10 or, an, or any Samsung or any Android is HD. Yeah. So you could go and shoot some videos and just press one button, upload it. And even if they pay you 10, 15, 50 bucks for that, yeah. if you do that 10 times, that's 500 bucks you can make in a day. Mm -hmm. Right, you times that by see a lot of people when, when they want to earn wealth, they don't reverse engineer, they don't work backwards. Yeah, right. So, you you, you, you gotta have a goal, right? The goal is if you want to make you have a thousand dollars, or two thousand, or five thousand, or ten, or a million, just take your calculator like this, open your calculator, right, and you put in a, an amount. So, let's say you want to earn ten thousand dollars, right? So, you put ten thousand, and let's say you have a product that you can sell for fifty dollars. Divided by 50, you only need to sell 200 of them. And if you divide that by four weeks, divided by four, you only have to sell 50. Right? So you, you divide break it that down by, into easy blocks. Right. So 50 divided by seven, you only need to sell seven a day. Yeah. So that's your focus. So your focus should be Every how can hour. I sell seven a day at $50? I'm mm -hmm. sure there's more than seven restaurants where you're living right now. And I'm using restaurants as an example. Yeah. Did, but if you, did you do a lot of, did you do business with restaurants or are you just using that example? No, I, I, I have a lot of, con I do a lot of consulting for businesses, uh. CEO, but I'm just saying that anyone can do this. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm flying to a company to show them how to implement you know, the social presence and social footprint because now if you're not on social, you're basically invisible. And, and for a business to become successful, you have to have visibility so people can know where to shop. Yeah, yesterday there was a, a woman mm -hmm. and she advertised that she does uh, personal clothing yeah. rebranding, yeah. style rebrand. Mm. I may need a style rebrand. <laughs> so I, he does not need a style <laughs> rebrand. So I went to her website, she has a website, but there are no pictures of anyone she has styled. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why would I trust a brand consultant, a style consultant mm. who has zero pictures of people whose style she has done. So, so many people like miss really basic steps in building their business and then they wonder why it's not working. Mm. So make sure you're really thinking it through and make sure you're watching podcasts like this mm. or, or researching online the steps. It's literally, it's all online. So mm. are you self-taught? Did you end up going to business school? No, I, I don't have any qualifications in, I did really bad at school. I'm a yeah. D student. I'm, I'm, I, f I found it very hard to, I'm dyslexic, so okay. I found it really hard to study at school. Yeah. One thing I realized is that you don't have, you don't have to be intelligent to be rich. You, it's so true. Right? I mean, how many of oh you watching this right now, you know people who are more, a lot more intelligent than you, Right, but I think you are intelligent. Just you know, just for context. But there's so many people like uh, Nas and I meet people, and mm. we're like, "How is this person so rich? They mm. are not smarter than us." You know, and so you can be really rich or successful. You don't need to be really smart or really no. well educated. You just need to have the right building blocks. Well, I, I think it's a few things. One is you definitely need to find people. So you need mentors. 
Yes. You, you've got to find a mentor. Um, you've got to be in the right network and support group. Because one, one fact is that if you hang around the, the right people, it will determine where you're going to be in the future. So if you hang around people who are broke, you're going to be broke. So you've got to change the circle. If you hang around people who are bad people, you're going to be a bad person. So you've got to hang around people who are positive, who, who in, inspire you every day rather than people that complain all the time. How can we find mentors? How can these people find mentors? How did you find your mentors? You can go to a lot of um, networking events, um, find a friend, find someone to look up to. A mentor is someone who has got what you want and all you need to do is go up to them, find out how much value you can provide to them. Don't work to learn, don't work to earn money, work to learn. That's the key. That's yeah. the biggest secret. You want to get good at sales, get a sales job, work for free if you have to. But what value can we provide? Can you give us examples of value? Well, there's only one question you have to ask. What are you currently working on right now? that I can help you or support you on. And they'll yeah. tell you. Oh, so we can ask. We don't, have, ask to, we don't have to know what it is. You just yeah, ask yeah. the question. They'll, and even if you don't know how to help them, yeah. if you try and find somebody who can help them, they, they're gonna appreciate that. As a connector. That. They, they're gonna appreciate that. There's someone I know who mm. can connect you with this. And that's just how I've done business all the way through. That's actually one of the reasons why I built Wealth Dragons app. If you're watching this, download the Wealth Dragons app. There's lots of mentors on there in different areas, health, wealth, oh. spirituality, entrepreneurship, business. They're all there. So there's mentors on the app. Correct. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Right. Oh, I have a question for <laughs> yes. you. So a lot of, you're not married, right? I am married. You are married. Yes. Okay. When you were, you seem very wholesome. What do you mean by wholesome? You seem like a nice person. Oh, thank you. You seem like you're not trying to take advantage of people mm. ever. Like you got your wealth, not by cheating, but by doing things in hard a good work. way. It's a lot of hard work. Yeah, and that's why I like him, because a lot of rich people exist and I don't interview them. And okay. by, by the way, just so, just so you know, anyone who wants things that they can make money by and get rich quick, any time you hear anything like that, do just go away from it. it. Every successful people, I know a lot of billionaires, and yeah. I, I see how hard they work, and even till today, I have a listed company in the stock exchange, and I work like 15, 16 hour days. That's why I have eye bags, crazy. You know? <laughs> yeah, I have no excuse for my <laughs> eye bags, so. Okay, so you were self-taught. Mm -hmm. You're a wholesome person. A lot of people, when they make a lot of money and they came from nothing, mm. they kind of go crazy. Yes. Did you have a go crazy period? No, because I've, I value money. Like, yeah. I, I, when I say I value it, I know how hard it is to make. Yeah. You know, it's not like, I was, it's not like when you're born with a silver spoon. See, I always say that, so, it's interesting actually. Yeah. Um, I own a Ferrari and a Lamborghini. Okay. Right? Not because I, I have a full-time driver, I hardly drive the cars. Yeah. But the reason why I own, the, own, own these cars is because when you own a Lamborghini, you get invited to the Lamborghini party, and also a Christmas party, and you get invited to the Ferrari party, right? Yeah. And when I go to two, these two different parties, I notice two different types of people. The people who are for, like Ferrari drivers, tend to be like from the city, like bankers, investors. But when I go to the Lamborghini party, they're all self-made entrepreneurs. That's right? interesting. Very interesting, right? And when you- So Ferrari is? Like bankers, bankers, like high level management, CEOs. People who work for other people essentially. Right, but ha like get paid a lot of money. And Lamborghini is self-made. Entrepreneurs. Okay, how, right? how come? I have no why idea. Why are they I, attracted I, to those I, I, I don't know why, I don't know why. but. Coming back to the whole mindset thing is, yeah. I see that hanging around different people, you need to have a different mindset, mm -hmm. right? Now, of course you go, well, John, it's okay for you, can you buy Lambi? I'm, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying you need to find people in these circles to hang around because you, it's information. The person with the best information wins. Yeah. My friend, he said to me, John, you should always fly first class. I said, why? He said, because people in first class lounge talk about different things in business class lounge. And I learned about this whole floating a company Ooh. thing. Like you will hear, have you heard of the guy, you know, Lee That's Koshin? interesting because we always, sometimes we get offered first class and we always say no. No, you should always Because we do. think it's a waste of money yeah. and we also, we like, well, we're like, we're a couple so we like to mm. cuddle and mm. first class separates the seats. Mm. So we're like, oh, we want to sit together. Mm. So you think it's actually worth it. It's not like, yeah. Yeah. Wait, so what about like? Well, well, no. So, so here's yeah. the thing. So I heard a story of Lee Koshing, who's one of the richest men in Asia. Okay. His driver retired, and when he retired, he gave him a check. And his driver said, "I don't need the check." He said, "What do you mean? You've been of great service." He said, "You don't understand, Mr. Lee. 
I'm already a multimillionaire. He said, what do you mean you're multi multi already a multimillionaire? Yeah. He said, well, do you know all the years I've been driving you around? Mm -hmm. and you've been in the back in, in the car with a phone and you've been asking people to invest in that stock and that real estate and that property. Well, I overheard what you were saying. I took your advice and now I'm a millionaire. That's a real story. It's a real story. Oh, it Check sounds, it out. So, Lee, it sounds Lee, so fake. Like, and no, then I'm No, <laughs> Lee Koshing. Lee Koshing is one of the richest men in Asia. Do a search for Lee Koshing. Driver is all there. That's that's I like this story because a lot of pe a lot of us are at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. We're you know I remember being in college. I remember the, like saving twenty five cents if a cheaper shampoo mm -hmm. was available, you know, for years and years and years. And so the reason I was able to kind of do what I wanted is because I surrounded myself with people as their server. You know, mm -hmm. I was working for them. I mm -hmm. was doing something to help them mm. i was interviewing them for a mm. blog or a website mm. or whatever and it's slowly you learn from these people right. you know so you don't need to be uh, i don't need to be your you know your assistant ceo mm. i can be your driver and still mm. learn a lot i yeah. can be your cleaner in the building yeah. and still learn a lot because if your ears are open you're going to pick up all this stuff mm. if I, you're listening and i'll tell you it's real life story so yeah. i have a full-time driver his name is Saj ali mm -hmm. he's been driving me for eight years mm -hmm. when when i met him he was almost pretty much broke yeah. and he was working for another company and was struggling. Now he has about 35 people working for him. Mm -hmm. And wow. so, so he said to me, John, how, how, how do I build a business if I'm a driver? I said, think about it. Like you're a driver, all you need to do is get good at marketing and he does oh. airport runs. So I said, all you need to do is market for people that need to go to the airport. They, all the co contacts come to you. You make relationships with all these different drivers. You give them the jobs and you take a percentage. And that's what yeah. he does now. Right, so you, so it sometimes it's you got to have the the right strategy, but the strategy can, and that's why I love what you. That's why I agreed to do this because yeah. I love that you have this distribution channel that you really want to help people and you want to yes. get this information to them and you're making a huge impact. Cute, it's so nice. I get a compliment today. Thank you so much. I am trying, and that's that's my personal goal. It's the same as you. Like you succeeded at obviously a different level, but you want to give back. Like I was listening to a different uh, interview he did, and you were explaining how. Like someone said like why are you doing all of this? Mm. You're already super rich mm. So why are you still doing this and your explanation was and I totally relate to this like once you succeed Not everyone around you has succeeded mm. all of your friends still have jobs They can't go at 2 p.m. With you on a random vacation to Africa, you know So you need to bring up the people around you so that everyone is able to be at your level and and that was so relatable because I was like I'm here in Singapore and I'm like man who do I hang out with mm. everyone has jobs and they're not free to do anything and so can you talk a little bit about that and how you want to help people even though you already succeeded and you can be in the bahamas uh, I, well I, I, I give an example yeah um, once once you make your millions it's just zeros right um mm -hmm. I always want to talk about legacy, about leaving something behind. That's why I built. That's why I spent millions of pounds building an app so I could get this out to people so they could learn this stuff. Yeah. And real life story. Yesterday I was giving a talk. I didn't get paid to do that. Mm -hmm. right? I just thought, you know, I'm in Singapore. I'll go do a talk. Yeah. And in that talk, I met a lady who did M and A. So M and A is what we call mergers and acquisitions. So what they do is they find companies to buy other companies. Right. Yeah. She just happened to be there. Right? I was giving a talk, I inspired her, she's like, oh my God, John, you really inspired me. I didn't know she was going to be there, but yeah. when I did the talk at the end, she came up to me and said, John, I know you just listed a company. That's a really good relationship to have now. Yeah. So I was just giving, giving, and what I find is that when you are ready to commit and totally commit selflessly, you just give, you don't expect anything in return, things just come to you because you open up I mean, I'm a little bit spiritual because I believe yeah. that the, the universe will will give you what you deserve if you mm -hmm. make a commitment that's why people say to me you're lucky I'm not lucky I create my luck the harder I work the lucky I become the more opportunities come and that's just the way life works yeah yeah it's so true it's mm. so true um, some of the, I'm gonna ask you some questions sure. now from Instagram <laughs> thank you to all of you for submitting these I chose my favorites this question is I am a young person with a chronic disability. What is the best way to prepare for the future? It depends what you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, focus is, it, it, everyone has different goals and everyone has a different definition of success. For some people, it could be just getting healthier, Yeah. right? 
Um, I mean, there are lots. I mean, that's, again, what I love about you do is that you talk about a lot of the health stuff and what, how health is important. Mm -hmm. So if I was this person, I would do a lot of research on health. There was one of my students who came to my event. Her mum was very, very, and she knew a lot about health. I say, how can you know so much about, you know more than a doctor. She said, well, my mum has cancer. Yeah, and she and she and she basically her mom doesn't have cancer now, wow. so she was able to find out all the different things that cause cancer, holistic approaches and diet, nutrition, and things that were people eating, your environment, um, you know, stress, and all. She was able to research so much. So it comes down to your why. Yeah. Right. Why do you want to do what you want to do, and that's your driving force to become who you need to be to get there. So what is your why? My why is the education system. Education. I wish the things I'm teaching I was taught at school. Yeah. I wish, I mean, I have a one-year-old daughter now, mm. and I'm debating whether I should um, homeschool her or send her to, to school because I just think sometimes the schooling system, I mean, especially in Asia, yeah, it's extremely strict, you know, and we want our kids to become doctors or lawyers or accountants. Why? I mean, yeah, we should have those, but if someone doesn't want to do that, why would you do it? I just see a lot of people, we, we just, we, we, we're just living, right? And that's why we're existing, but we're not living. Yeah. But we want to start living. So, and you know, now there's opportunities where you can do what you want to do and get paid to do it. So why wouldn't you do that? But the reason So many parents need to change the mentalities because oh, they're huge. dissatisfied with their kids if they don't do doctor, lawyer, accountant, or failure. Do you know, I had a lady at my last conference and yeah. she her, her son plays a lot of games. And she really angry that you know, he spends all this time playing games and this and that. I said, it's a good thing. He said, what do you mean it's a good thing? Do you know there are kids playing games that are making half a million to a million dollars a month playing games using a software that you attach and it streams the games. You see, times have changed. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't let your kids play games so yeah, much, yeah. right? I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being the extreme of that. But what I'm saying is you need to have informed knowledge to make an informed decision. Yeah. And I think too many people, they have... They don't have the right knowledge and they're giving unsolicited advice. And that's why you have to be careful. Look it's at the source of the information that's mm. coming to you. Correct. Look at the source of the information you're getting. That's really something important. I mean, okay, so for example, when he comes on here, we establish why we should trust him, right? We establish his history with businesses. We establish his property ownership. I don't just randomly say that for him to get to, to sound super cool. I say it so that all of you realize why we trust him, why we're listening to him. Yeah, continue. Mm. Um, and so I always think that if, 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 you, if you're putting yourself out there, yeah. and like for example, one of the best ways right now, if, if you wanna get paid to do what you love to do, social media. Everyone uses social media. I mean, that's where we met. Yeah. You know, and I know a lot of friends right now who are on social media. They're starting the wrong. I know a guy who he makes pots. He's getting paid for the pots. I know somebody who um, is, uh, she's a pilot. Yeah. And that's what she does as a full-time job, but on the side, she's traveling around the world. I know people who are on social media and they're fitness training, they're into fitness or nutrition. So you can go out there. In fact, Facebook is actually bringing something out where you can get followers now that pay to follow you. Oh, yes, really? Yes, it's called the Facebook support program, which will be coming out depending on when you oh, watch I this. Oh, I've heard about it. Yeah. It's out already. Yeah, it's out already. I mean, it's out already. If you go to my I have friends who have it. Yeah, if you go to my Facebook page, you will see a button that says oh. become follower. So I'm beta testing this for them right now. But, but they can still follow you even if they don't support you, right? They can. They can. They so just you can get have special things of correct. support. You can have free followers or you can have paid followers. So if you, let's say you're into cooking, right? You can have followers that follow you for cooking, but you, they can pay you $10 a month to follow you to get the special recipes mm -hmm. for cooking. So there's so many different ways, but people need to, they need to learn before they earn. If you write the word learn, L-E-A-R-N, mm -hmm. take off the L, it spells earn. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, back to the questions. Yeah. How do you balance your budget? An app, Excel, what do you use? I have a CFO. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, the uh, CFO, Chief yeah. Financial Officer. Yes. Okay. Right. He hired a person to balance his budget. That, that's the thing, right? You just hire people smarter than you. What if you don't have money to hire someone? How should no, a beginner balance their budget? You can partner with somebody. You can partner yeah. with somebody. You can find a CFO. I'm sure if you go online, type in CFO. Right? Or you tap in someone good with money and say, you know what, I, don't, I, can't, I can't afford to pay you, let's partner together. That's what I did with my first business in real estate. Really? My, my, my cousin, Samantha, I couldn't afford to pay. I said, come and work for me in three months and you're going to learn and earn. Right? Yeah. If you work for me, I'm going to find you a house. Mm -hmm. So she came to work for me and I, okay, I paid a little bit. But yeah. she, she took a pay cut, like a big pay cut. And I said to her, you do know that if you quit your job and work for me, I might not be able to pay you in six months. 
Yeah. And she took the plunge and now she's got three kids and now she owns one, two, four houses now. Wow. Right? So, and she doesn't work for me anymore. So yeah. she doesn't have to work for me anymore now. She doesn't have to. Right? She has her own so, houses now. So, again, you've got to be creative. It's not about the resources. It's how resourceful you are. Yeah. Right? You, you've got to think out of the box. Yeah. You see, if people want something bad enough, like when people say, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone's got time. We all have 24 hours in a day. Yeah. If something's important to you enough, you'll make time. Yeah. That's a really true mm. principle. From Instagram, Rajan Nadappa asks, is borrowing money good or bad? Depends. Are you borrowing money to buy a liability or are you borrowing money to buy an asset? Right? So. A lot of people don't understand the difference between assets and liabilities. Yeah. Like if you like, for example, a lot of people say this. You know, if you if you buy a smartphone, it's going to cost you five to a thousand dollars for a phone. Mm -hmm. Right. You could easily put that into a website and drive some traffic there, pay some people to promote it, then you make more than that back. So the the whole idea is, you want. So give to, me an, give me a simple example of an asset and a simple example of a liability that a normal person would have. Right. So people would take a credit card. In the UK, it's really bad for credit cards. Yeah. They'll take a credit card and they'll go on holiday. They'll pay ten thousand pounds for a holiday. Okay. It's gone. Right. That's, that, that's it, and you have to pay it back again. Right. Yes. An asset is if you buy, for example, a watch. Yeah. Right. But a certain type of watch. Yeah. For example, one asset watch could be a Rolex Daytona. Yeah. Because there's a five year waiting list for a Rolex Daytona, you could buy it for ten thousand and tomorrow sell it for fifteen, twenty thousand, depending on the demand. Oh, so it's a good purchase so because you can resell it. Correct. There's a difference between good debt and bad debt. Oh. Right? So for example, if I said to you buy my Lamborghini for a hundred thousand in Singapore, Lamborghini is a half a million. Right? Yeah. So people go, hundred thousand is a lot of money. I said, compared to what? If you can buy it today for a hundred and you can sell, sell it. it for just two hundred, which is still below the market value here. Yeah. Then you make another two hundred thousand. Yeah. You see, so you have to understand value. What about value. student debt? Is that good debt or bad debt? I have a very strong opinion, but I want to hear his opinion. You know, there's a. I mean, you're from the U.S., right? Yeah. So they say that you know the average student in the U.S. will spend a hundred thousand dollars to get a thirty thousand dollar job. That isn't a question right. we have. A, right. a woman has. How can I save and invest when I have a hundred thousand in student loans? Right. So the first thing you need to do is rather than thinking about debt, you need to see what whatever you focus on, you attract into your life. Yeah. You keep focusing about debt, you're gonna get more debt. It's just as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So instead of thinking about I don't have any money, you have to think about new ways to make more money. Yeah. And that's how you gotta do it. But the thing is when you've got a lot of debt, and personally for me, um, someone said so I some of my students that come to me for consulting are Harvard graduates. Yeah. They went to Harvard Business School. Yeah. And they come to me for advice. Yeah. And you right? didn't go to any school. I think I you didn't, didn't do, go I to didn't do that well in school. <laughs> I mean, I've spoken in Oxford before, so you yeah. know, I go, I go and teach the students. And so I you're give like an honorary graduate from all higher well, educational institutions. I just think that I, I I believe that I don't think that formal education is not important. It is important. Yeah. But there are two types of education. You've got formal education that makes you a living. Mm -hmm. You have self education that makes you a fortune. Mm -hmm. But most people don't put time into self education. They'd yeah. rather go and watch Netflix or watch, you know, go to the cinema or go clubbing or go out at night instead of working on themselves and in their business. Yeah. You see. So um, my personal opinion is, should you get student loan debt? It depends. Again. Depends. It depends what you want. To, if you want to become a doctor, great, do it. Yeah. If, if you like a lot of people that go to business school, my my question to them, someone asked me, should I go to Harvard Business School? I said, it depends. Do you want to work for somebody or do you want to start your own business? Yeah. Right. Do you want to um, go into somebody's business to learn and then start your business? Like, like, what do you want to do? So the end objective of going there needs to be aligned with what yeah. you want to do. Yeah, I agree, and I think. Student debt people jump into student debt mm. way too quickly is my personal opinion because people are so Accustomed to it. They mm. think it's normal. Yeah, I was raised um, Super religious. I was raised Mormon and we were taught the only things to go into debt for are Your house maybe your car because mm. I'm in the US you can't yeah. go anywhere yeah. without a car right. and your education Right, but I think when people say you go into debt for your house your car your education I think the way education works now is the debt that's gone into for a lot of people is way higher than the return they're expecting mm, to get. Right. So again, if you're going to Harvard Business and you're going into debt and you're planning to make 
$300,000 a year afterwards and live in a cheap basement so you can pay off your debt in two years, mm. that's one thing. If you're going to a performing arts school and you're gonna be a theater major and you're not sure when your success will hit, it could be in 20 years, mm. I think you should really be careful with, mm. with student debt. You know, it's interesting, um, there's a, and you can all look at this, a real story. Yeah. There's a guy on YouTube who doesn't say anything. Yeah. He just sits there and he reads and he's got half a million subscribers now and people, you know how YouTube works, you get paid on how many long people yeah. you watch your video. He's now funding himself through university, through YouTube. Why are people watching him read? Watch me read, everyone. <laughs> Look at all the books I by read. By the way, his video is 6 hours and 44 seconds long. 6 hours and 44 seconds. What are, why are people watching? <laughs> it's insane, right? Well, do you know why people watch it? Is it like it's just novelty or is it helps well, them focus or? You know, the world's changing. <laughs> You know, it's like there's people who are playing with plasticine and get paid millions. There's, there's kids that play with toys that, you know, have multi-million pound businesses. There are people that draw and auction. There's a guy that, I kid you not, has a Starbucks coffee cup, draws on a Starbucks coffee cup and auctions it for like $3,000. His name's James Rias, check him out, he's amazing. If you look at the Super Bowl, right, they charge five million US dollars and for a 30 second ad, Yeah. right? So how does TV make money? They make money by advertising. How does YouTube make money? Most of you who are watching this, maybe you're watching this on YouTube, maybe, right? I don't use YouTube very mm -hmm. much, but I should start. Yeah, YouTube's but amazing. I don't use YouTube. So all of you could, could upload videos and start making an income from people watching your videos because the way YouTube makes money is they put a, you put your videos up, when people watch it, they place ads in front of that and then you mm -hmm. get paid money. So that's another way you could start earning income from doing what you love to do. Yeah, and a lot of people I think want to do that. That's one method that most people know. They mm. know I could make money on YouTube, mm. but they just don't know how to get views. Mm. And you need to provide value. value. Yeah, you can't just sit there and make some weird looking cooking dish and expect a million people to want to watch you. You need to create value and you need to create value over and over and over and over and over again. And then eventually it will succeed as long as every video you make or every book you write or every poem you write or whatever the heck you do, you need to get better each time. So if you're writing, if you're making a video and each video is the same as the last one and there's no improvement in any way, you need to look at what you're doing and get better. Because Agreed. consistency and improvement is what leads to success for a lot of people. Okay. How should teens and students manage their money? Young peoples. Okay, let me tell you a quick story. So okay. when I was uh, um, in, in high school, my parents used to give me three pounds a day um, for lunch. So yeah. what I used to do is I used to take a pound, I used to keep a pound, mm -hmm. and then I used to take a pound to school, and the other pound, actually not, what would I do? No, I'll keep two pounds. Keep two pounds. I'll keep two pounds aside, because I wanted to save up for a Neo Geo console. Oh. It's like, it a games console. <laughs> and, but, so I would save two pounds, I would take a pound to school, and with the pound I'd buy lunch. People go, how can you buy lunch for a pound? Yeah. Well, I would go to my best friend, his name was Ben Stobbs, and he used to have these, um, I could smell them. There was like these garlic sausage sandwiches. I could smell them from his bag. I was like, I was like you got garlic sausage? He's like, yeah. So he hates them. His mum used to make them all the time. So I used to pay him 50 pence and get the sandwiches. And then the oh. other 50 pence I would use to buy a, a can of soda and some crisps. That would be my lunch. And I did that every single day, right? Wow. For about a month. Yeah. So I saved up all this money and then my mum found it and she said, why you got this money? And then she confiscated it. But anyway, she confiscated your she money did. that you saved? Yes. But she punished you for saving money? No, but this is a lesson. Oh, okay. So this is why I learned this lesson. So what people should do with their money is this. They should split it up. So I have this um, formula, it's called the piggies system. So okay. think of a piggy bank, P-I-G-E-S. So the first thing you need to do, let's say you, let's keep it simple. Let's say you earn five pounds, right? Okay. So every five pound you earn, or five dollars, or ringgits, or dollars, wherever you want to And if you need phone, a whiteboard, we can bring yeah, it over. That's okay. Okay. So, so one pound, you need to put into play money. So I call this your play fund. So you need to have five funds. Your play fund means that you can spend money on anything you want without feeling guilty. Okay. You see, most relationships have a joint account and then, then people argue, so, oh, why did you spend this much money? Why did you? So you need to have a play account. That's the first thing. So P is play account. Okay. I, you need to have an investment account. The only, a lot of people know how to earn money, but they don't know how to multiply money. Mm -hmm. The only way you can multiply money is to invest money. Like if you'd have invested in Apple, 10 years ago, you could have bought one share at like $6. Today, it's worth well, it's worth a lot, right? Yeah. Um, the third thing you need to do is you need to give. 
Mm-hmm. And the reason why you need to give, like I, I support a lot of, ch- and we probably talk about what I do, education. Yeah, I build yeah. schools in, in Kenya. I support the empowered youth programs that, that's put now 54,000 kids through wow. the youngsters, mm-hmm. through all these different um, uh, mindsets mm-hmm. and, and, and motivational seminars. Um, so you need to give. And the reason why you need to give is because it, it switches your mindset to abundance. Yeah. So what you'll find is if you try and hold on to money, you won't get any. Yeah. If you give it, Somehow, I don't know what the universe, I don't know how it works, but just more money comes back. This is weirdly true, but you do need to be careful where you're giving your money to. Correct. You're not just throwing money out and you expect yeah. to get money back. I think it should be somewhat strategic and with good intentions. Agree, yeah. agree. Uh, and so the fourth I used path- to struggle with that because I was like very, the cheapest person on earth. <laughs> and that worked for me for a long time because yeah. I was able to save money and travel mm. the world with like making $7 yeah. an hour. Yeah. But doing that is actually really a useful mm. thing I just wanted to mention because mm. it's hard for people sometimes to want to give when they feel like they don't have enough. All so right. I- so G is giving. Yes. So E is education. Okay. So for the fourth pound, you've got to put that into yourself. Okay. Because most people, they don't educate themselves. Mm-hmm. Like you should read books, you should attend conferences, seminars, you should pay for mentoring and coaching. Yourself. Like get that self-education. There's a saying that says, formal education makes you a living, self-education makes you a fortune. And the last one is saving, right? Yes. So you should, I think, I think it's important to save money. I think a lot of people spend money and that comes from when we're little kids. Like you, yeah. you do the chores, you get paid pocket money, you spend it all. Yes. So it's a conditioning process. So I guarantee you, if you follow these five principles, of where, how to manage and budget your money, you'll never be short of money again. Yeah, something uh, that surprised me as I was growing up is I would meet people mm. and they would say, oh, I'm going on a vacation to this place or I just bought this car or I just bought this outfit and I'm like, wow, you must have a lot of savings mm. because I would never buy those things unless I had a lot of money saved. And then you find out like, no, that was their last money. They used it to buy an outfit or mm a car or or eat a really nice meal and I'm like th- this is why these people aren't able to save money and have money to invest it's because they don't they, they treat the money they make as money to spend Correct. instead of whereas someone like with my mentality I'm like okay only if I have a huge amount of money will mm. I buy these extras, yeah. right? Where yeah. I know it will never affect my bottom line. And you're, you're absolutely right. And it's the same yeah. with investment. A lot of people take all their money, invest in one thing, and if it goes south, that's why they go broke. And, no. and so, but if you have that, that those five steps, even if you lose all of that in that investment, you still mm-hmm. got the others left. Exactly. So you should always invest your money in different places, not all of it in one place. So I have houses. But okay, this is actually a really good story. A lot of you ask me, Aline, how do you have three houses already and you're just a random person? Okay, this is how. Let's say you save a lot of money. You're 30, you had a good job, you have, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars, whatever people save by age 30. Mm. Um, in the upper income bracket, obviously. You can buy one house if you pay cash for three hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars. Or you could buy five houses if you put down payments on them. Yes. So that's what I do. It's called mm. leveraging your mm. money. So mm. you're using one amount of money to get a lot more. So if mm. I paid cash, it's true. I would not have to pay off my house. I wouldn't mm. have to pay the tax, you know, the interest. But then I can only have one house in five mm. years. Instead, I can buy three houses mm. by by putting a 20% down payment on each house. Mm. And it's actually less money. So I have more money in the bank. Mm. I have three houses now Mm. using the exact same amount of money. And she has capital appreciation and cash flow. So you're renting Mm -hmm. the houses out. So let's say the mortgage or the loan on there is 500, but you rent for a thousand. Exactly. With three houses, that's 1,500 cash coming in. Yes. And in 10 years time, the loan's going down, the price is going up. Now you've got equity, that's very smart. Exactly, and if I ever make a lot of money, I can pay off the houses, but for now, there's no reason. Okay, let's do, okay, how much money do you have, approximately? (laughs) Let me Let's check. look at this. I need to check. <laughs> you Asking know, the hard questions. You know they say that if you know exactly how much money you earn, you don't earn enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So currently I am 40% of this company called Wealth Dragons Group PLC, which is listed on the Vienna Stock Exchange. And as of today, and it may be different, it may be higher or lower, depending on when you're watching this. But as of today, my company market capitalization is 35.6 million. That is an official valuation. So, and you own 100% uh, of this company, no, or you have partners? I am 40%. 40%. Yes, I'm 40%. So 40% of that evaluation is yeah, yours, correct. if you sell. Correct. And my goal is to keep 
well, you know, I can't say this, but my goal is to, <laughs> to push that up. You know, I will do whatever it takes. I yeah. work hard. And that's why I said business is extremely hard right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anyone who wants to become successful, do not expect, <laughs> there's a saying that says, don't expect a million dollar lifestyle on a nine to five mindset. Yeah. Right? Yes. So many people that, okay, so many people want to work with the NASA Daily Company mm. and they think immediately by working with us that they're going to be successful and they're mm. going to have all this awesome stuff. Mm. And then they say, oh, I don't want to work past 5 p.m. Yeah. And we're like, you don't want to work past 5 p.m. means you're not going to do well. Mm. <laughs> like, you're not going to do well in our company and you're not going to do well for yourself. Like, mm. the people who are succeeding are the people who are working way past 5 p.m. who don't even think about 5 p.m as a time limit. Like mm. you can still succeed in, in a moderate amount working a nine to five job, but mm. don't expect to be doing something mm. insane by mm. working eight hours a day with a one hour and, lunch And break. you know what's interesting as well? Um, yeah. Uh, you're, you're, again, this 90% of people are probably the same mindset. Yeah. I think one of the reasons for that is they, they don't have the, they haven't found the passion or purpose yet. Yes. I mean, I can get by sometimes on four hours sleep. It's not something I condone. It's because you it's love still, doing but, but I love doing what I do. Yeah. You know, I, I flew here. I had, over the last three days, maybe four hours sleep each day. I did a three-day conference in Singapore. I did a three-day conference wow. in, in Kuala Lumpur. I've, I'm here with you now. And after this, I have another two interviews. And so it's. It, I love what I do. I'm yeah. really passionate about it. I found my purpose. And my mom said to me years ago, like, you know, son, you don't have, to, when you find what you do, you never have to work a day in your life again. Yeah, exactly. Because you're not going to want to leave at 5 p.m. to do something else because you're already doing what you, you like it. doing. Yes. <laughs> you know, video making or cooking or whatever. So how does this work with your relationship? Like, how do you travel so much? Is your wife here? Is yes. she back home? She's with yeah, you. So she comes with, with you. Yes. Oh, that's so yeah, nice. So we, we I mean, obviously my, my daughter does as well. So yeah. Which, I mean, my wife is very understanding. I mean, she, I, I could not, I could not achieve what I've achieved without her. Yeah. She's like my rock. She's like, that's nice. she, keeps me humble she keeps yeah. me on the ground like sometimes i tend to like you know ego gets in oh yeah, yeah. and it's like oh, cool. honey come on think about where you came oh, yeah. yeah i get it i get it <laughs> so she's she's the person that really i mean if, if it hasn't been for her she's so understanding and does she well, come with you like a hundred percent of the no, time? No, not hundred percent of the time. Yeah. I would say probably around 60 70 percent of the time. Okay. Yeah. And then the rest of the time you guys are in Manchester. Um, Milton Keynes actually. Milton I, I, Keynes. I was brought up in Manchester. Okay. And I live in Milton now. Keynes, which is about thirty minutes outside of London. So okay. I don't like living in the city. It's too it's too stressful. That's why I love this view. If you can see this view, it's amazing. It's like you, you see these beautiful trees, all this greenery, it's it's peaceful. Very peaceful. This is at our house, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing this at our house. Okay, next question. I was interested in your in your relationship with your partner mm. because it's hard like when one person is traveling all the time, you know, and, to find and a balance. Funny thing is I've been in a lot of relationships. Yeah. Ones that did not work out. Yeah. And it's so like if you want to create a lot more success in your life, you have to have a partner that understands what you do. Yeah. Right? You both need to be on the same page. You both need to respect each other. Like she'll have views, I have views, I respect what her decisions like, you know, I'm the boss at work, she's a boss at home. You know, she, yeah. t I mean, you think I do what's hard? God, do you know how, what it takes to bring up a child and to, and to give birth to a child and to, to manage a child? <laughs> it's so, like that so is the, hard. any of you watching this who are parents, you know, you are all amazing. Like if you can become a parent and bring children up, you can do anything. You can build billion dollar companies. I'm telling you this. Yeah. So if you have kids, <laughs> you have the potential to be a billionaire. You heard it here first. Okay. Do you, okay, this is, oh, so, oh, I do a lot of uh, stuff about female empowerment okay. and, and, and women's rights and like the kind of overt and subtle ways that women are, have more obstacles in some ways. Yeah. You know, every group has obstacles. I'm not mm. saying any other group doesn't, but that's kind of something that I like to focus on. Mm. And one of the questions from Instagram was, do you think there is a relationship between economic success and people's aesthetic beauty? And this was asked by a woman, so I'm guessing it's more, Female centered, but also I know also mm. men it can affect, mm. especially yeah. historically now, not as much. My honest opinion, yes. Yeah. Um, it, it does have an effect. Yeah. Um, it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like when you walk down the street and one restaurant has a queue and the other one doesn't, which yeah. one's got better food? Yeah. You know, it's just the way it is. So that's why if that's the game, you've got to play that game. Mm -hmm. You've got to play to that angle. So I'm not saying that you should, you know, put naked pictures of yourself on Instagram. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you <laughs> don't should. Don't do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> I'm saying you should be, you should 
please the you should understand your audience yeah right? and you should be authentically you because there's two ways to look at this um you want like a lot of people say to me like what do i have to post on social media to get lots of likes that's the wrong question the question should be what do you want to post on social media to get the people that follow you that like you and will stay stick around we just talked about this community yeah so i do think unfortunately that's the way the world is it's it's just us being humans it's the, it's the media with conditioning i mean unfortunately we do judge a book by its cover yeah we 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 have preconceived ideas of when people speak to in a certain language of who they are um even when we fly to different countries oh is it safe there is it, is it not safe there so it's just conditioning but my my point is that even that is the case you should understand that but also be true to you as well yeah yeah i'll use myself as an example because i am myself um i'm a woman and I'm at least moderately nice looking and that's all you really need in order to use your looks to succeed yeah and I struggled with this when I was younger because I was I was growing up I'm growing up in Los Angeles a super superficial place yeah. where I was like devastated that I wasn't blonde hair and blue-eyed like my mom because now my life is ruined mm. because I don't look like I'm supposed to look like a California Barbie doll mm. so I was really just disappointed growing up by that I felt like I was cheated you know um, like how was I supposed to succeed when when the pretty people are the ones who succeed obviously the pretty ones are the ones who get the spots in the school plays or things uh, and I think that's something each of us are gonna struggle with uh, men too men will have this to a degree in their own way like taller men historically are known to succeed more yeah. it, it's not happening as much now the statistics mm. have changed but you know in the 70s and 80s taller men got more business deals because of yeah. their presence. Mm. Um, and I think each of us has to think about that on our own. I personally feel that for me, my version of my own integrity is is not really playing up that part of myself. Is uh, is I want a world where women are not judged on their looks. I know it's probably never gonna happen 100%, but I know it can get better because it is getting better. Yeah. Because there are a lot of successful women who don't necessarily look like they're supposed to. Like mm. Oprah is mm. the perfect example. Mm. I mean, Michelle Obama, of course they're beautiful. Like Michelle is like super fit and Oprah has like great features, but they're not blonde hair, blue eye, tall, skinny ladies, you know, mm. which is what I grew up thinking you have to be mm. um, to succeed as a woman. Because in when I was a kid, there's not women in business. No. They're just not. If you're a girl, people don't even talk to you about business. Like we miss so much of the vernacular of business because it's never said to us like yeah. you talk to your boys about it not your girls and that's totally changing now which is amazing um but i really just want to say to like the girls and the women like you can succeed without having to play up your looks you can succeed whether you look nice or not mm. um i do my best to yeah yes i wear makeup sometimes i like makeup but like i don't do my hair i woke up this is my my bed hair when i was mm. younger I would never go in public if my hair was not straightened mm. perfectly. Mm. Never, never. I wouldn't go camping without straightened hair, okay? So that's just my little mm. brief aside on, on mm. women. Like, don't feel like you need to look a certain way to succeed. Mm. There's so many examples these days of, of different looking women, yeah. and we are the ones who can change the narrative. So you should succeed no matter how you look and show people that, that you don't need to look a certain way to get it. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah. absolutely right. So, yeah. so to answer your question, the world is like that. Oh, it is. No, so I'm agreeing the, with you. The, the world is like you. that. Yeah, I and agree. I, and, and what I would highly recommend is just be the best version of you. Exactly. Right? Be the best version. Like, if you are overweight, go to the gym, get into shape, eat better, because it's good for you as well, because it's healthier as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if you... If, men if, or women. Yeah, men or women, assuming, right? Yeah. Like, if you're a guy and you, and you, you smell, right? Clean smell. up. Just, it's, yeah. it's basic hygiene, basic, just basic human being, just... But being the best version of yourself being is the really best enough. Of you. Yeah. It doesn't mean you need to get plastic surgery. That's no, no, not no. what you need no, to not, do not to be the that. best. No, I'm yeah. not saying yeah. you are. <laughs> Just people take things the wrong way sometimes. Correct. So I want to make sure it's clear. Yeah. Like yeah. when we say be the best version of yourself, we mean within normal amounts. Have good <laughs> hygiene. You know. Yes. Be healthy. Take care of your body. Um, take care of your mind. Like make sure it's sharp. Like for me. It is important to be presentable. Mm. Like I like to be presentable, but I also like to be natural. Yeah. So I could be super dolled up right now. I could have fake lashes. Mm. I could have, you know, um, super intense makeup. Mm. I could have my hair styled and a really nice outfit. 
but I like to present myself to you guys yeah. as, you know, semi done up. I put some makeup, but I don't do my hair and I wear a normal outfit. Mm -hmm. So I like to kind of create a space yeah. on the internet for for women to succeed without looking like a like a newscaster weather woman, you know, <laughs> that I grew up seeing on TV all the time. Okay, so this is a big question. Mm -hmm. When people succeed, everyone feels like you owe them, like they should take from you. Yes. And I, I love Oprah, she's my, my favorite role model. And Oprah had um, some podcast or something where she was talking about how she had to learn how to say no, yeah. because people will ask for things that may be relatively small, like can I have $5,000 for yeah. a loan? Or yeah. can I have X or Y? Um, so, so what's your policy on saying no? Uh, how do you know when to say no or yes? And that's so true. Like sometimes, you know, it's interesting. Um, I noticed this when I early in my early years when I made money. I yeah. would go out with friends, and, and, and the perception would start changing. So we'd, we'd go out for dinner, and then when the bill came, so oh yeah, go and pass the bill to John. He can afford it. I'm like, hold on a second. You know, yeah. things like that, little, little snidey comments, like, oh yeah, yeah that, oh that's really expensive. It's okay, John can afford that. You know, so you're absolutely right. <laughs> it, it's almost like, if I show you the message I'm getting, oh John, um, John I'm, I'm poor, can you buy me a house? Or, yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, I get those too. Can you do, buy me an iPhone? I'm like, no. Do you, do you know, I had a TV show, a big TV show, one of the yeah. biggest in the UK. Wow. And they came to me and they said, John, we want you to be on this TV show and we want you to give one of your houses away for free. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You want me to give a house? Not because I don't want to, but do yeah. you know what message that sends to people? That you can just get things for free. That's one of the biggest problems right now is that people feel like they owe a living, right? They feel like, oh, you know, you, you, oh, you have it, I want some of that. Every, you gotta work for it. You want something, you gotta work for it. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest problems in, in, in the UK right now is that, and you know, the ge generations growing up, it's I don't wanna do any work, but I want everything. Yeah. That's like saying, I want to have a baby without any of the pain. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you got to, there's no such thing as a get rich quick. You got to put in the work, you got to put the effort, you put a thousand percent, you get a thousand percent. Bill Gates said, um, this quote, it's a bit harsh, but I think it's, it serves this purpose. Yeah. If you're born poor, it's not your fault. If you die poor, it is your fault. Oh. Wow, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's quite harsh, but. It's self responsibility, no one's going to do it. For you. The moment you take ownership in your life, everything changes. The yeah. moment you stop blaming people, the moment you start saying, oh, it's that fault, it's this person's fault, she made me, he made me feel like this. No, you're in control of how you feel. Yeah. You're responsible for what you want to do. It's cause and effect. You know, things happen in your life because of the action you take. If I yeah. want to lose weight and I don't go to the gym, I'm not going to lose weight. Yeah. If I don't, it's a, it's end of the day, it's a decision. You yes. can decide whether you want to eat chocolate bars or rubbish or you can eat healthy. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. So make the right choices. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. Do you have anything else you want to add that we did not touch on? Anything that's important to you? Anything that you think yeah. is very useful? Yeah. So or your own personal feelings of something. So one piece more message that my mentor taught me which served me really well in life was you're going to grow up and you're going to do things and there's going to be a lot of people around you that say you can't do it. There's going to be a lot, what I call these red lighters and green lighters. Red lighters, they try and stop you from doing things. Yeah. They say you don't have the potential, you don't have what it takes, or you know, just stick, be realistic. Yeah. Those are the type of people. And the other one is green lighters where they'll tell you, oh wow, if that sounds crazy, but you could do it. Yes. So, so what will happen is the moment you decide to do something, everyone will support you if you're around green lighters, but the moment you start succeeding, the people that support you will try and pull you down. right? Mm -hmm. And so you start getting haters. The moment you start getting haters, that's a sign that you're doing well. Because if you are not big enough, like if people aren't saying bad things about you or criticizing you, you're not big enough. So everyone, please comment how much you hate me on this video. Thank <laughs> you so, much. <laughs> um, so, so my and and so what Vincent said to me, he said, you know, because I used to get really upset about other people's opinions where they don't yeah. even know who I am. I'll, I'll put a video up or a post and like what, like I'll have a thousand good comments and one bad comment and we focus, focus on that, on. you know? Yeah. So I just don't, there's lots of toxic people, get those out of your life, change your circle, be around people who are gonna empower you and don't let other people's opinion of you become your reality. And mm -hmm. that one, this one last quote, which I'll finish yeah, with yeah, yeah. is, and I said this to me, I'm so upset that these people said, brother, he said, 
you know sheep you know tigers are not concerned of the opinion of sheep and you're not a sheep you're a dragon okay so john also is on social media by the way and that's how i found him and he has a really amazing instagram where he makes videos that explain really confusing topics in a really simple way that i love and what is your instagram title uh, if you go to john lee official and you'll see it with a verified here's the text i will type it here afterwards 